Townsville's 35 Squadron says goodbye to one of its most treasured colleagues next month. Caribou aircraft have been part of the Air Force for 45 years and the time has come to retire the fleet. Megan Woodward joined hundreds of veterans who've flown in the Caribou at a send-off ceremony. The first men to fly the Caribou reckoned the aircraft would have a limited life of about a decade due to the nature of its hard, heavy lifting capabilities. But 45 years on, the workhorses are only just being retired. Just like all hard-working, reliable colleagues deserve, the Caribou have been given a special farewell in Townsville to thank them for the part they've played in the history of the Royal Australian Air Force. I think it's a very, very special day, uh, not only for the current serving members of the squadron, but significantly for all of the people who've served with uh, the Caribou uh, for the last 45 years. For men like John Stahl, it was like saying goodbye to an old mate. In 1964, he was a 23-year-old pilot and sent on assignment to Canada to fly back Australia's new consignment of Caribou aircraft. It was the opportunity of a lifetime, and all these years on, even the tiny details are as fresh in his memory as ever. You've got a paper bag underneath the pilot's, pilot's seat, and it went kaboom, right? And then I nearly flew out of my skin. And I actually felt like pulling my revolver out and saying, if you want to do that to me, clunk, clunk, this is what I'll do to you. Obviously, I didn't quite do that. The flight was made all the more exciting when the young crew got word that the Air Force and its new planes would be deployed into the Vietnam War effort. And our boss said, gee whiz, we could go to Vietnam. We didn't quite know where it was, so someone went into the library and found an atlas and said, well, that's where it is, and someone said, hey, there's a real war over there, they shoot at people. So we got back to Australia and lo and behold, yep, they formed a group and we said, off, off you go. So we had to do our medicals and we had to get... The dog tags made and we had to make sure we were fit. It was in Vietnam that the Australians and the Caribou laid the foundations of their formidable team. While the Americans were reporting in at least one casualty a week in their fleet, the Aussies broke all records in terms of airlifts as well as being the first aircraft to arrive in Vietnam. The Caribou were also the last to leave. Uh, with six aircraft, we did as much as two American squadrons in terms of the passengers, loads, airdrops. We used to drop cows, we used to drop pigs. We used to do low-level uh, drops, six foot above the ground with the wheels up. The Beach King Air will fill the void the Caribou leave in the Air Force for the foreseeable future, while the government makes a decision on what aircraft has the best tactical airlifting capability to replace them. Uh, the Caribou has a very unique capability. Um, Something that uh, was very significant for its day. Um, I think we're moving into a, a new time there where uh, technology um, and different capabilities are warranted. Um, but I just don't want to take that away from the, uh, that soft spot that everyone has for what it is the Caribou does. Since their first taste of combat in Vietnam, the Caribou have worked throughout the world, most recently in East Timor and on humanitarian missions. But for those who forged their career in and around the aircraft, the memories are very special. Very much so. I think anyone who's ever operated this aeroplane has got a very soft spot for, uh, for operating with the aircraft. Um, it creates a culture within the people that operate it um, in a very um, can-do way. Um, and um, I think the camaraderie that develops within the, uh, within the squadrons is, uh, is quite significant. And it's, uh, it's a way of honouring that today to make sure that we remember that. It's a bit, a bit like having a, a vintage car, I suppose. People have an emotional um, connection with their vintage cars and I have an emotional connection to this aeroplane. I spent most of my Air Force career with them. It took me to the most, as I said before, some of the most amazing places you could imagine. And I'll never forget that. I've had a very blessed life and career due to these aeroplanes and this Air Force. So the only regret I've got is I can't do it all over again. The aircraft officially leave the skies this year, but will mark their place in the history books with one to be displayed at the Australian War Museum and another at the Air Force Museum at Point Cook in Victoria.